All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jaykin, not one of your regular instructors. So maybe that's why you signed up. It's not working. Well, we'll just use it here. Oh, hi, Jackie. Just missing Nicole. All right, we're gonna get started. So welcome to game theory and debate. Um, I just want to start by playing uh, basically word association, okay? When I say the word game, Nicole, welcome. Now we have everybody. Where did you get coffee? I feel like walk far enough and we have it. I wasn't going to walk far enough, slash I didn't get up early enough. What do you think when I say the word game? What's the first word that comes into your head? Like rules. Rules, okay. Winner and loser. Okay. Players. Hate the Game, not the player, or hate the player, not the game. I like that. What else? Fun. Fun, yeah. Fun's a huge one. Anything else? Does game denote something serious to you? I'm seeing some heads shake. So would you... Give me another word here for game. It's something that is light. Is that, does that seem fair? I see some nods. Okay. I'm going to spell it like potato chips, you know, like uh, games are nice and light. All right. So now that we sort of have a broad overview of stay on this one. Let's list some games that we like. And you're not allowed to list debate for the next 10 minutes. Okay. Just what are some games that you like? I like chess. Soccer. Basketball. Okay. Fortnite. Fortnite, great. I've never played, but I have seen it, I think. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. It Okay, what about other computer games? I like StarCraft, that's because I'm old. StarCraft 2, actually. Google Dinosaur Game. Google Dinosaur Game? Is that what it's called? Or I'm supposed to Google it? I uh, know, it's a Google Dinosaur Game. Don't know that one. What else? Crossy Road. Crossy Road? Have you not heard of it? No, it's a computer game? It's like a mobile game. Spell it. Um, Crossy, like cross Y, and then road. Okay, all these things I'm gonna have to try. Any big Minecraft players out there? Is that like the right generation or? You're over Minecraft, or you were never into it. Nobody's not in their head. All right, what about board games? Can anyone list a board game that they like? Catan. Okay. Cudo. 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 Cludo. I don't know that one. Spell it. C L U E. No relation to clue. It's the same game. Just like same game. Monopoly. 
You're trying to solve a murder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Monopoly, I heard. All right, this is a decent list. So let's see if we can break down our list of games and all other games out there into some types. All right, so, or maybe, maybe a better way to ask you is why do you like these games and not other games? Why, why do you like Cluedo, Jackie? What about it do you like? Um, like it makes you think and it's like interactive. Okay, interactive. This is a great one. So, interactive is a great example, all right? Has anyone ever played a board game where instead of interacting with the other players, you're just focused on your own thing and it's kind of like a race to the end and at the end somebody wins but you're never really sure who's winning for the whole game anyway a lot of board games are like this uh a lot of computer games are like this right so interactive versus not is one of the huge bifurcators i hate those games i hate the non-interactive games you're just like in your own little world I sit down to play board games because I like interacting with my friends. Okay. Um, Catan strikes a nice balance, right? You have to negotiate your things. Monopoly also, because you're always billing people, kind of a nice balance. There are these whole board games that are not interactive or lots of games, right? Um, what about these two? Are they interactive? No. Okay, fair enough. Lots of computer games are not interactive. Um, all right, what are some other, uh, all right, what's, what's the big difference between soccer, basketball, and chess? Physical. Okay, yeah, so physical versus not, but go one level higher maybe. Yeah, so, the, uh, so team versus, individual. What about chess versus Catan? What's up? Okay, yeah, the, this is a great one. That's not what I was thinking of, but luck versus no luck. And this one's actually a spectrum, right? Catan requires skill, but there is a luck factor chess there's no luck factor and then you can all, go all the way to yahtzee right where you're just rolling dice okay so that one's not that i'll put a little okay good uh what about number of players this is 1v1 right but these are not this isn't 1v1 is it it's like a battle arena, yeah? Okay, so one, one. These I'm gonna count as 1v1, even though you're playing on a team here. Okay, many players, let's see. This, it's a separate factor, but we can also talk about zero sum or not. Does anyone know what that means? You're close, you're on the right track. It's not about the who eventually wins, it's about... One person's gain is another person's loss. Yeah, anything that's good for me is bad for you. It's a zero sum game, okay? Some people, like zero sum games, some people don't like them. What's a non -zero, what's a famously non zero sum game? Poker, right? And the flop 
could be good for me and good for you. I might flop a straight, you flop a flush, not zero sum. Okay. Um, all right, what other things make you like or hate a game? Okay, so fairness, maybe we should put that a, hmm, fairness is a little weird. Shouldn't all games be fair? Can anybody name an unfair game? Game where you have to where you can pay money. Oh, this is great. Okay, so magic, basically. Magic cards, you're giving me a blank look. Oh no, I mean like a pay to win game. Yeah, magic cards were famously a pay to win game. I'm dating myself here. But you had to buy decks, and the more decks you bought, the more the better your odds of getting one of the like super rare powerful cards. Nowadays in the internet. So yeah, all right. So Pay to win. Good. Um, I have a bunch more things on my list about stuff that, that categorizes games. Can you guys think of anything else? Okay, balance. Love that. Or not. This game, and generally in computer strategy games that are played professionally, mostly in Korea, um, people spend a lot of time debating the balance, right? And whether things are balanced because there's a lot at stake, right? And so if it's not balanced, if one race is more powerful than the other race, then that impacts people's actual lives because they're playing the game for money. All right, so um, that, since I said it out loud, I'm just gonna say another one. I'm gonna put this elsewhere, I'm gonna put it here. Do you think of games as having high stakes or low stakes? Just playing like chess. Okay. Yeah. So, why variability? Which really sort of throws some some uh, question marks at how we understand the word game, right? Um. All right, I've got a few more. Anybody else have one? For game categories? All right, I'll throw a couple up. Um, how about availability of opponents? Anybody here like playing a really weird game? They never find anybody to play with them? Liam's like, I think so. What's your weird game? Um, I, I don't know the name because it was really unfair. And then, and you see, you don't even know, you didn't have anyone to play against and it's faded. Yeah, okay. Um, how about death? Could anybody name a not deep game? Uno, yeah, that's a good example. How about another one? Want to play again? Uh, 
Okay, weird, we tied. Tic-tac-toe is not a deep game. It is in fact what is called a solved game. Okay, I'm gonna put this one up here too. Solvability. Can anybody name a more complex game that has been solved? Some chess positions. Yeah, do you know what that's called? Neat and whatever. Yeah. It just looks like the AI. Well, AIs are much better players than humans, but in fact, you need to have, um, and it's called the um, table base. You need to have six or fewer pieces left on the board to have it be solved. More than seven, it gets exponentially more complicated, right? So we have not solved it for seven or more pieces. Okay, solvability, good depth. What about, uh, I got a good one. You guys play a lot of tic-tac-toe? You do? Okay. Oh, okay. I mistook you. Kind of guessed that because it's not challenging, you wouldn't play tic-tac-toe, right? There, there, is a, there is a connection between those two, right? Anybody ever come across a game that was too challenging and they're like, fuck this? What was it? Um, so I was I was playing against one of my friends who was really experienced at the game and I was starting out and it was like impossible to beat her. What was it? Valorant. What is it? Valorant. That's a computer game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was a computer game when I was a kid called Mist. You ever heard of Mist? I couldn't get out of the first level. It was like a puzzle mystery kind of game that you had to like walk all over this map and like try to like do things in the right order. Couldn't get past first level, it drove me nuts. Quit. Okay. Um, how about same sort of, uh, Same sort of uh, top, like same area, right? The learning curve. Can anybody name a game with a gentle learning curve? Easy to learn. Yeah, chess is pretty easy to learn, but difficult to master, right? That's something I think a lot of games aspire to. Can anyone name a game that was really hard to learn? Magic. Yeah, much more complicated, right? So the learning curve creates entry barriers, which affects the availability of opponents. Okay, I got one more and then, uh, does anybody else have one? Any more categories of games or descriptors? Oh, that's a great one, yeah, turn-based. Here. Turn based versus real time. Chess. Um, Catan, maybe, kind of. Basketball. Fortnite. Right? Some games are turn based but involve multiple players in every turn. So like in Catan, you get to negotiate with people to trade things. In Clue, you uh, get to ask people to see their cards or three of, or one of their cards based on your prediction. And so it's turn-based, but we're still involving multiple players in each turn. I personally think that's better. There are these uh, really complicated board games where each person's turn is like seven steps. And if you're playing with five players and you have nothing to do during those steps, it's like, we got to go through 34 steps before it gets back to me. That's pretty annoying. All right, one more. I'm going to put it over here as well. It is rule. Um, 
maybe I could say stability. Has anyone ever played a game where the rules keep changing? Yeah. They do? Yeah. Uh, tell me more. Plus twos and plus fours. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does change the whole thing, doesn't it? Some people try to like cheat by saying like plus two on your opponents, plus two. And you can't? Yeah. Oh, see, so, yeah. you guys know way more about it, you know. Anyone else ever play a game where the rules were not consistent? How about, have you ever played the game Mao? Anyone? Card game Mao? Oh, you guys are in for a treat. Mao is a card game in which the uh, players don't know the rules and the person who is teach, like teaching the game is not telling you the rules. So you just keep losing, hence its name, right? And then like eventually you play it enough, you figure out that they're just making up the rules as they go. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna go do this to somebody else. No, nobody? Interesting, times change. Um, yeah, so that would actually be like rule stability, but also rule knowledge. Like how, to what extent are you allowed to know the rules? Okay, now before we sort of get into the debate half of this lecture, I want you guys to brainstorm with me some other ways the word game has been used. Give me an example. Yeah. Did you know that they don't actually call military exercises war games anymore? Why not? Yeah, that's one answer, or maybe because it was trivializing war in a way that wasn't really a good look. Yeah. All right. Well, you've, you've, you've skipped ahead to one of my favorite examples. Can you hit the lights, Liam? I really hope the sound works. Okay. So, young Matthew Broderick here has managed to hack into, he's figured out the password for an unknown computer system on the very old internet. I remember once he was really sick. And what was his name? My father. No, 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 no. Falcon's kid. Joshua. I can't do that, son. It takes on Falcon. Oh. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm not going to ask you that. It'll ask you whatever it's programmed to ask you. You want to hear it talk? Yeah. I'll ask it how it feels. You know how we all feels that sometimes make Name do. How do you talk? It's not a real voice. Uh, this box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play name do? Oh. <laughs> I think I missed them. Yeah, weird, isn't it? I'd love to. How about it? Wouldn't you prefer a good game or chess? <laughs> Later. What? 
Okay, this is from a wonderful film. Anybody know what film it is? War, War, games. Games. War Games. Have you seen it? Oh, it's great. You got to see it. There's an earlier scene. I wonder if we can find it. Uh, in which they get the list of games, which is pretty good too. Okay, he's changing our grades. They're hooking up the computer. Yeah, it's somewhere in here. What's it doing? Oh, it's dialing numbers. It's fucking Jimmer. I was kidding. Yeah, here we go. All right, smoking or non smoking? Uh, they found an airline. Blasted for help. Can we do that? Yeah, on some systems. Dollar. Dollar. Oh, games. He's trying to steal video games from a. That's how this all started. Model simulations and games to that must be that. Teach with applications. What does that mean? I don't know. That's got to be good. Turn, turn on the printer. We don't want to get a print out of this. Now he thinks he's found the game company. Games. Games. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right, that's the lights. Okay. All right, so I'm going to spoil the movie for you a little bit. What do you think the thesis of the movie is? Yes, that's the plot. What's the thesis? What's the point the movie's trying to make? <laughs> no. Global Thumor nuclear war is not a game, right? And there's this heartwarming scene at the end, again, I'm gonna spoil it for you, where the computer learns that the only way to win at global thermonuclear war is to not play. Duh. Okay. What's that? Nothing gets launched, but it's all very close. All right, what about some other uses? All right, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna act for you guys for a second. Was it all just a game to you? Who am I? Who am I speaking to? Yes, thank you. All right, so my heart got broken and I wanted to know, was it just a game? What are some other uses? If, okay, <laughs> that sounds pretty personal. <laughs> yeah, so in these uses, those three, all three of them, war games, the one I did, the one you did, what is the word game being used to signify? Yeah, exactly, right? It's something that is trivial, right? Or that you were behaving as though it were trivial. That's why I put like on the list, right? Uh, okay, I can give you some other examples. The game of life, who said that phrase? Do you think life is a game? No. Okay, personal opinion, why not? Because um, the stakes are higher if you do something wrong. Yeah, you never get out of life, right? That's the old joke. Okay, good. Um, Anybody know about the game? 
the game. You think of the game and you lose the game. Never heard of that? Okay, that's a that's an old one, maybe. Um, I read a wonderful article a few years ago about uh, the Patriots. Um, and it was about how it was like during the whole like Spygate thing. And it was about how everybody was up in game, up in arms about the integrity of the game. And the article suggested that if you substitute the phrase, the value of the asset for every time somebody said the integrity of the game, everybody's furor would make a lot more sense. Because what in fact was happening was not that the Patriots were recording like uh, calls that you know were on national TV. The problem was that they were winning too much and everybody was flipping out, right? They were getting more than their fair share of the spoils. Maybe the stakes were too high. Where did we put stakes? Okay. All right. So stand up. Okay, if you think debate is a game, go sit over there. If you think it's not a game, go sit over there. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll have to take, I'll have to represent this side. All right, you can all sit down in your regular seats since you all believe the same thing. All right, so give me your arguments, yes. Why is the beta game? What makes it a game? It's like two sides trying to win in an equal environment. Okay, so we have this. Um, we have this. I'm not going to give you equal environment. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, zero sum. What's up? Zero sum. Zero sum. Is it? We'd spend a lot of time talking about how debate is educational or supposed to be educational. Do the losers learn things? I guess so. If if that's one of the goals of debate, then I wouldn't say it's zero sum. Um, what else? Why is it a game? Okay, so uh, we have some rules. But let's start, let's stick on rules for a second. Are the rules stable? Okay. Do we know all the rules? We sure spend a lot of time arguing about them. Yeah. So can anybody think of another game where the rules are as unstable or as unknown? as debate. So maybe it's not a game. Sorry, well, I, I, I interrupted you. Were you about to say something? Oh, I did. Okay, give me other reasons why we think debate is a game. Okay, that's good. We don't have that one on here, but I'm gonna put it on here. Some games don't have strategy, right? Yeah. Yahtzee or I don't know. There are all sorts of silly little games that don't have strategy. So there is strategy in debate. Good. Very mistakes. Yeah. So we have a wide range of stakes, just as you might in a pickup basketball game versus the NBA finals. That's fine. So we know, I think, or at least I think we can agree that there are games that have the same game that has stakes from like nothing to a lot. 
right? We don't have NBA finals level of stakes, but there are high stakes at some point. Data, chess, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's a good argument for yes. Uh, game. All right, just play devil's advocate with me, even though you were all on that side of the room. What's the biggest argument that debate might not be? Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna, all right, so. all right. All right, so are there educational games? Yeah, of course there are, we've all, you know, maybe that's how we learned to type or um, all sorts of things, right? There's a whole theory that the best way to educate kids, especially young kids, is to let them play games, right? So is, is the educational bit itself, um, an argument that it's not a game? I don't think it's a great argument, but, I do think that you're sort of onto something. So talk to me a little bit about what ratio of time you spend preparing for a debate versus actually debating. Okay, so that's not weird, right? Lots of games where you practice a lot. But are you practicing when you're prepping for debate? Sometimes but not always. Yeah, mostly you're doing research, right? Okay, so that's different, right? You can't really, you're prepping your equipment, your pieces, That's like kind of a good argument that maybe debate isn't a game. I cannot think of another game that's like that. Magic, who brought up magic? Someone over here? Yeah, magic's like a little bit like that, right? You're like deck crafting. And magic was also one of our great examples of this, right? So, you could say either that makes debate an unfair, a bad game, or not a game, right? If I have to take care of my mom and like work three jobs, I probably can't be as competitive in debate as you if you don't have to do those things, right? Because there's an extra game burden, an extra time burden. What are some other arguments that there's not a game? There's one really big one. One like categorical one. What's the win condition? Yeah. What's the win condition if there were a nuclear war? Don't play. Okay, yeah, judge voting for you. All right, can anybody name another game that is decided by a third party? Dungeons and Dragons. I've never played, but my understanding is that's not how it works. The, the dungeon master sort of guides everyone, but they don't disguise the decide the winner. I could be wrong. Anybody ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Okay, let's try another one. Anyone have another one? Okay, so if debate is unique in that the win condition involves a third party, then I think we're starting to get towards uh, 
a pretty good argument that debate might not be a game. All right, so in debate, we talk a lot about competing interpretations, right? So over here, we're gonna have game. What would be a competing interpretation? If debate's not a game, what is it? What type of person is the judge? Yeah. The tests kind of like who's done like the better work or who did the better arguments. Okay. So, so all right, under that model, we're going to call, I'm going to call that the competitive scholarship model. That puts the onus on the judge kind of to decide whose scholarship, whose argument is better, right? What about you all are listening to me, you are my audience. audience. What other things have audiences? What's that? Well, I'm deaf in one ear. No, and just in the larger world. Shows. Yeah. Okay, so music shows, theater, comedy. Competitive theater is one argument, right? That this is in fact what we are engaged in, a form of theater. Who's debated a team who you felt would be better if they left debate and got into theater? <laughs> I see a couple of half raised hands back there. Okay, so, um, All right, so I think we don't have a lot of time here. In fact, we only have a few minutes, but I, I want you to start thinking about it's easier when you're debating what debate should look like to offer completely separate interpretations, okay? If you all agree that debate is a game, but we don't really know the rules, then you're kind of stuck with all of these things that we associate with games, okay? And uh, that's definitely not the only way to think of debate. And the biggest argument for why there's a categorical difference between debate and most games, maybe all games, is that judge in the back of the room. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Um, if the two sides disagree, one side, and we can get out of debate for a second, one side thinks we're playing a game, the other side thinks we're not playing a game. Who is that worse for? What's that? Are you sure? Why? Okay, fair. But I can see it from the other side too. Think about the person on the other side of my, uh, was it all just a game to you, right? If the one person thought, yeah, it was just a game and the other person thought, no, I was trying to sort out who I was gonna be with for the rest of my life, that really sucks for that person, right? So there are 
impacts to which side of the game debate you're on. And we've just enunciated the two of them, okay? The other thing is, um, uh, I just lost what I was gonna say. Um, one sec, see if I can dig it up. Okay. Um, all right, so all right, these are the Two that you guys talk about, one you've probably never heard of. This is from my day of debate. These are the impacts of your T and theory arguments, right? Jurisdiction was the concept that the judge is there to represent the resolution, right? That's their role in our game or in our theater. And so they didn't have the jurisdiction to vote for non topical acts. That was the idea. Okay, that one has fallen out of fashion. Do games have to be educational? Are all good games educational? Are some good games educational? Okay, so when you're debating what makes a game good, do you have to go for education? Does debate need to be educational to be worthwhile? Okay. All right, what about fair? All right, so uh, that's easy. We'll get rid of that. What about fairness? Do games have to be fair to be worthwhile? Yes. What does that mean? There can't be like an obvious view of who's going to win. OK. All right. So if I go to play uh, Michael Jordan at basketball, is there obvious skew? Who's going to win? Probably. Yeah, Mike, Mike's going to win. Right. OK. Was that game fair? All right. So I think you need a different definition. I would love to play Michael Jordan in basketball. That would still be worthwhile for me. Totally worth my time. It's fair to incentivize more people to play. Say again? It incentivizes more people to play. Because it's not fair to lose. Okay, I like that. So the uh, rules need to promote fairness such that people play. All right, I like that very much because there's a big difference in games between equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. We talk about this a lot in the education sphere too with uh, affirmative action, stuff like that, right? Um, but the quality of opportunity, could I theoretically beat Michael? We're playing by the same rules. No, definitely not, look at me. But in some grand imaginative theory, yes, right? So equality of opportunity and this, the fact that people are making arguments about equality of outcome in debate is an example of why it might not be a game, right? If we say, yeah, like, do you guys have any problem if the person who is able to practice basketball more wins basketball more? Okay, but in debate, we start to feel like that might matter, which suggests that the stakes are higher than we want with the game, right? The, game, the word game we use to trivialize. All right, we're, we're running out of time. I'm just gonna tell you a couple more things. Fun, third on this list. This is the biggest one that never comes up. This 
I think should be your number one T theory impact. Because if games aren't fun, people won't play them. So if we're all going to operate in the debate as a game model, then it needs to be fun. Right? And um, I think generally you all um, you use the wrong tenses. Give me one sec. Um, use the wrong tenses when you're talking about um, impacting your T theory arguments. You're always looking forward. What will debate look like? But you should be looking back. How has debate changed and why has it changed? Participation in debate has plummeted. Can you make an argument for why that is and say we should stop doing this here and now in this debate room? Okay. And then likewise, when interpreting what the debate should be, I hear a lot of debate is a game. Your tense is wrong. It should be. Okay. Interpretations look forward, impacts look back. And there's no time for questions, which is good. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, guys, I, I ran all over. Um, but happy to talk about this more if you would like. And uh, I'll see you later.